Hey everyone, ahla wa fikum. Welcome to a very special video today. We're going to do another annotated transcript, but it's the first one that we're ever going to do from my website. So as I mentioned in my video last week about, you know, where I announced my new website, I'm going to be putting all of the annotated transcripts. Actually, I have already put all the annotated transcripts that I've done on the website so you can access them for free. Um, you know, copy, paste, download, do whatever you want. Um, and yeah, it's all on there. So the newest one I've also already put on there so you can go and check it out right now. And actually you can use it as you watch this video if you want. Um, but yeah, that's on there. So let's check out, uh, let's see how we can get there. So the link to my website is all over my channel. You'll come here, then you'll see this. Uh, of course you should go to text. And then basically this is the list of the annotated transcripts that um, I've uploaded. Actually there's eight in total. The, this new one is the eighth one. Uh, these are all about the annotate, um, the Our Family Life Jordanian cartoon thing. I'm going to just keep those on here. I'm going to focus on those videos because I think those are actually really good. And there's a lot of consistency with like always having the same characters and stuff. Um, I did three about some other videos which are on the Patreon. So all of these used to be on Patreon. Now three of them will stay on the Patreon because they're kind of about other stuff and it's kind of... Uh, I, I want to keep it where it's like all of these our family life videos are kind of all together and I'm going to focus on, on doing those. So the most recent one is down here, Min al Um So yeah, you can basically watch the video while you read the, you know, what they're saying or, you know, you can try to listen and see how much you understand and then check for the words that you didn't understand um, and so on and so forth. Because every so often they do use a couple of things that sound or like it's hard to, they mumble a little bit or like they use an interesting kind of construction or like word that you wouldn't expect, which is good, you know, because then you, you're exposed to a couple of rare words every so often. Um, but mostly there's a lot of consistency, which is why I really like this, um, these texts. So um, as usual, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go line by line. Um, and, you know, if you want to just listen to what the whole thing sounds like, just watch the video. You know, it's not really worth me reading that. So yeah, I'm going to go line by line. We're going to do half of it today and then the other half will come later. But as I said, the whole thing is available already. So you can just go and, and, you know, do the whole thing by yourself. But yeah, in my videos, I'm going to focus on just explaining all the kind of grammatical things and giving additional context, you know, outside of just the, the literal translation that I've written. Um, so yeah, without further ado, I'm going to take a sip of Sahlab, which is perfect winter drink. If you haven't heard of Sahlab, it's uh, very popular in Palestine during the winter because it keeps you warm. So, yeah. Um, so let's start. Um, of course, it's a family of four. You have Im Sana, the mother, Abu Sana, the father, Sana, the son, Sally, the daughter. So we start with Im Sana. I want to say Im Yazan. That's another character that will come later. So Im Sana starts. She says, Shu Sally, Kif Meshi Mama. So, um, so this shoe, by the way, it's one of a couple of words that you can really just ignore. Like, it's just kind of a throwaway word. It's like saying, hey, or like, you know, what's up? You know, I don't know. It doesn't really have a meaning. Um, although, I mean, literally means what? But yeah, shoe. Also, yani. Uh, even tab. Or actually, I've written it as tayyib, uh, which is like the actual word. But people just say tab, tab, tab. And it's also just like, okay, you know. So tab, uh, okay. Yani being like in English, the way we say like, and shu is just like, what? <laughs> I don't know. Um, it doesn't really have a, a meaning. So, uh, what Sally? Keith uh, Mashi, mama. By the way, uh, Mashi, it's uh, the active participle. And I've remember that all the yellow words are active participles. I've made sure I've labeled active participles yellow, um, passive participles blue, and uh, green are um, verbal nouns, like noun forms of verbs. So anyway, uh, mashi is the active participle of the verb masha, which means to walk, or that's like the main definition, but actually it just means to go in general. So cars also, uh, timshi, like they also, they walk, they don't really walk, but like this is the other meaning. So um, you, if you say like, timshi, it doesn't mean the car's walking, it means the car's going. So actually, I, actually a better translation would just be, how is it going? You know, like it just like we say in English, how's it going? Keith Mashi or Keith Mashi it. Um, so it's in the feminine in this case, but you know, whatever. 
and Mama, of course, Mama Baba. It's just like pet names, like within the family. Um, and it so Mama is not just for the mother, but can also be vice versa. So in this case, uh, the mother is saying it to the daughter. Kif mashi Mama. And then Sally says, Mishimnir. Irriwaya ktir tawile uma tikhlas. So Mishimnir, not good. Riwaya is a novel. Ktir tawile, it's very long. So the novel is very long. Uma am tikhlas. Am, remember that it's this um, present continuous, let's say, emphasis marker. Like it emphasizes that an action is ongoing. Uh, but it's not it's not really necessary. It's not mandatory to use it. Um, it just emphasizing that you know it's so long and it's really it's not ending. You know, and it, it, you know it really doesn't want to end. Um, so of course because khalas means to end. So the novel is so long and it's not ending. Tab um, uh, So <laughs> this is a tricky word in the with regards to the pronunciation. By the way, tab as I said, okay. Um, ra future, but what is this verb? Laha, it's not well, it's not the most common, but actually, it is kind of useful. So, laha means let's say to catch up to something or to manage something, like they kind of go together. Will you catch up to, to that thing that you need to do? And so, it means like to manage to do something, to manage to do something. That's let's say that not manage as in like managing a restaurant, but like being able to do something. Um, in spite of like, let's say time or like that kind of thing. Um, actually in Spanish, we say alcanzar. And I just say that because alcanzar means to reach. And it's very similar to the way the Arabic is thinking where like it means to reach, but it means to manage to do something. Uh, will you reach that goal or like that, uh, thing that you need to do anyway. And then yani, whatever. Um, so will you manage to do it? Will you manage to basically finish the novel because it's so long? And then Sally says, Mama, ma'alish belash hal asile. So interesting sentence here, actually. Um, ma'alish means like, okay, yeah, it's interesting. So ma'alish in a kind of uh, positive way, it means it's okay or like it, it's uh, fine. You know, like uh, if you apologize, I can say ma'alish, like it's okay, you know, like that. Um, but it can also be used to kind of form polite requests in a way. Like, it's kind of like saying, is it okay for you? Like, for example, is it okay if I have some coffee? You know, it's kind of like a request of sorts, although it could just be asking permission or a request. But yeah, also malish is kind of having these kind of different, um, connotations. So, uh, malish is like, is it okay? So that's why I translate it as, would you mind? It's like, would you mind, you know, uh, is it okay if you don't ask these questions? And as for balash, okay, hey, asile means these questions. So, el, question, asile, questions. So we know that. But balash, balash um, also has a couple of different meanings. And by the way, all of these words should, should uh, well, these ones I can say for certain, they have entries on the Wiktionary. So remember, I'm also... I've been creating this kind of online dictionary for Palestinian Arabic, basically, um, on Wiktionary. So if you have any doubts about, like, if I say, oh, this word has many meanings, you can go and check those meanings. But I don't want to exhaustively state all of it, you know, all in this video. So I'm just going to focus on what matters here, which is that balash, in this case, it just means without. Um, actually, um, bala means without. And, um, well, yeah, so that, that by itself can mean without. And then the sheen is like the, the negation. So it's kind of, uh, you know, like the way that I say ma'barif, ma'barifish. This sh can like basically negate something, but it's optional. And uh, I guess what's happened is that bala has been like this sheen has been added to it. So it's just, it, it really doesn't have any different meaning from bala. So bala without, balash also without. But balash does have its own other meanings additional to just meaning without. So in any case, in this question, it just means, you know, would you mind or like, is it okay, ma'alish, balash hal asile, like without these questions. I translate it this way, even though in English, it's a little bit not, would you mind without these questions. It's not exactly quite how we would say it in English, but uh, you get the idea. And I try to be um, as kind of literal as I can be with my translation of Arabic, just so you kind of understand what the word 
is kind of doing in the or like how Arabic works or how it's thinking. Because if I translate it like in a completely English natural way, you might not still know anymore like okay what what but what does that word actually mean in Arabic, you know? So uh yeah. So mom, would you mind without these questions? Bitwatirni. Uh so Wattar, wattar means to like make something tense, like, you know, even like a string. So uh, wattar means to make something tense or stressed, basically. It's kind of the meaning that it has today as well. So, uh, so wattar to, um, to tense something. So enta, bitwatir. Actually, there, actually, I just realized there's a typo. So bitwatrini. Ah, no, 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 no. Okay, so... Yeah, because I was thinking she's saying you stress me out, but she's not saying you stress me out. She's saying the questions stress me out. So, um, what that to let's say to stress someone, bit what did the either you stress me out or they fe- or uh, sorry, she stresses me out. But remember that uh, questions it's non human plural, so it's treated as she. So, she, but meaning the questions. Stress ni bitwatir bitwat yeah bitwatir ni they stress me out. Uh, yeah, there's a lot going on there, but um, yeah. So the question stress me out. That's what she's saying. Bitwatir ni. Um, okay, and then ah, and then uh, actually Imsana gets a call, so she answers the phone. She says, "Alo, ahlan imyazan." Um, alo, right? Ahlan hi, ahlan uh, imyazan. Shu when gatse. This is a cute expression, actually. Uh, again, the shoe, don't worry about it. Um, rot, okay, rotis. Rotis means to, like, submerge, basically. Like, yeah, to, to be submerged. It's not the main, I think, the most common way that it's actually used is in the active participle. So rotis means something that is submerged. So when rotis, uh, or when rotis to a man, it just means, like, I mean, literally, where are you submerged? But it means like, where have you been? You know, like you've been gone, you know, like you've been missing, you know, uh, we haven't seen you in a while, you know, that kind of thing. So when got, when got this or when got this for, for a woman, um, very cute kind of natural expression to use. Kifko, how are you? Hey, no, So, uh, shakar to thank. So, no, we thank God. So just thank God. Uh, we will see this word hayna. Uh, not hayna, but just hay. Uh, this hay is uh, very useful. We'll see it a couple of times. I've definitely mentioned it many times in other answered transcripts because it always comes up. But it basically means like here is something or something is happening right. It can also be used like am to emphasize a continuous action. But the reason is because the meaning is like here is this ha- either happening right now or just here is this. So, uh, hey yo, here it is. Like that's how you say here it is in Arabic or in the dialect. Uh, hey yo, hey plus a suffix. Hey yo, you know the suffix for who? Here it is. Hey ha, here it is uh, for a feminine object. And hey now here we are. You know it's like you know we're here. Uh, like hey, um, so it's just kind of a non-answer I guess. But yeah, just like thank God we're good. Uh, and then she says, she so Im Yazan is still saying Im Sanad, bidi asalek am tari etil kubbe. So of course Im Sanad, bidi asalek. I want to ask you, Saal to ask bidi asalek. I want to ask you an about tari etil kubbe. This is very good. Um, tari, it's very useful word. Um, let's distinguish between two different words. We have tari, which means a road. And we have tari'a, which can also mean, let's just, let's call it a way. So tari' road, and then tari'a way, which is very similar, of course, in, in Arabic, the, I mean, the, in English, the meanings are similar. In Arabic, also the meanings are similar, but also the words are similar. So make sure to, to uh, keep in mind that distinction. Tari'a is the one you'll probably use the most. Well, okay, so here's an example of both. Tari road, right? Ana bitori. I'm on the road. I'm on the way. That's how you say I'm on the way. Ana bitori. Um, but then tori is like, especially when talking about like the method or like the way of doing something. So um, 
Yeah, I mean, in, in, and it's used a little bit. It's funny how it's used in Arabic because tariqa del kubbe literally means the way of kubbe, but it's but tariqa already um, kind of connotes like the way of doing something. Even if the doing is not written in Arabic, tariqa is like the way of doing. So the way of doing kubbe. And tariqa del kubbe, the way of doing kubbe. So tariqa is like way, but also the way of doing something. Like inherently, it already kind of has that meaning. Um, so very useful word and kobe of course is a kind of food. We actually we eat it in Colombia as well um, It's very popular. So uh, Yeah, so how to make kobe Im Sanat says Shum yazan soidit fannani bittabikh min warana Don't worry about this sentence honestly. I mean, it's she's just kind of messing around. So what im yazan? Soidit, okay, soidit to become Soidit as the active participle It's um Actually, in this case, it's an active participle of the meaning of to start doing something because saw can be, uh, you know, can can mean something. Someone started to do something. Sar, uh, sar I don't know. He started to he started to talk. So sair in the active participle in this case it's feminine, but sair it means like are you starting to do something? So are you starting to? Um, Actually, the literal translation, because this is, I should have inserted the literal translation as well. Um, so, uh, it fun. How would I even, well, how should I even um, describe this? So, fun, this root, F, uh, fa, nun, nun, this root relates to um, skill or artistry, actually. So, fun means art. And in this case, it fun, it's like, ooh. Like being skilled, I mean, yeah, I don't even know how to translate it exactly, but it's in form five, which is like, um, like, uh, kind of intransitive, like create. So I don't know if I would call it creating, not really, but it's like, are you being skilled in cooking behind us? I mean, what up? So, um, okay, so. Wara, it means behind. So warana is behind us. Min warana, from behind us. So it's like, are you, yeah, I mean, look, the way I translated it, like, into English in a way to make it make sense is, is your cooking starting to fall behind ours? I think that's basically the notional translation, even if actually these words are a little bit kind of, um, this fun, this is fun and verb is just difficult to translate. But it's like, is your cooking skill starting to, Fall, it, it's like from behind us. I mean, what on? Anyway, as I said, don't worry about it because either way, it's just kind of, um, kind of just messing around. It's not so important. Um, yeah, anyway, so Imyazin retorts, she says, huh, she says, huwa ana shadra bit tabakh, bas fi ashia min zaman ma amiltha unsitha. So a couple of things. Uh, let's, Take the parts that we can easily understand. So, ana shater or shater, of course, feminine. Shater means uh, also. So many people know that it means smart, but it also in the dialect, but it also means good at doing something. So, ana shater bit tabakh, tabakh meaning cooking, like as an action, which is why it's green. It's a uh, verbal noun. So, uh, it so who zalam uh, shater means he's a smart guy just like by itself. But if we combine it with like a, a particular activity, then it's good at that. So, I'm good at cooking. Uh, but there are things. This is a, well, let's skip that for a second. I didn't do them. So there are things I didn't do them. And I forgot them. Nisi, uh, to forget. Nisit, I forgot. Nisita, uh, I forgot them. And again, ha, you know, it's uh, the feminine third person, like she, but it's because it's ashia, things. Uh, okay, so min zaman, there's three words for time in Arabic, three main ones that I always talk about. Zaman, wa'it, and marra. Marra we can completely ignore, to be honest, for this discussion, because marra means like an instance of something. Like, it's not time in the sense of time, but time in the sense of um twice or once or like uh one time or two times you know that kind of thing it's like a counter for time what is the real 
like main word for time in the dialect. So do use uh, one second. Yeah. So do use uh, what for basically any time that you want to say time. Um, Zeman in Fosha, it just kind of means the concept of time. But in the dialect, it while it does, it can have this meaning, but the most common way of using it is actually with the meaning of like, uh, like a long time ago or um, like a period, a long period of time. So, um, for example, Zeman el Atrak. Zeman el Atrak. So Atrak is Turks. So Zeman el Atrak is like in the time of the Turks. That's, yeah, exactly like that. We in English we say time, but it's like in the time of the Turks, like in the in the Ottoman period, basically. Um, so that's that's Zeman. And also, uh, Ayam Zeman. Ayam from Yom. Ayam Zeman, like the days of a long time ago. It's like saying the days of old, you know, like, yeah, basically the, the, the so Zeman, it's kind of this kind of abstract, not, yeah, abstract time, but it's like, um, not poetic, but yeah, it's more like, it has, it has a kind of um, affect, like it has a, like a little bit, it has connotations outside of just like a strict definition of, of time. You know, so fo so do use what for the most part. So anyway, min zaman in this case, uh, this is very common to say zaman with min. Min zaman means like in a long time or like since a long time ago. So there are things I haven't done in a long time, min zaman, uh, and I forgot. Now, the last thing I want to say about the sentence is actually this hua. Because why is it hua ana? Um, that's because which is, this is a kind of a big topic, but it's simple, actually. I mean, it's not that it's complicated, but sometimes this can happen where, um, like, uh, how would I even, um, so, yeah, sometimes the there, the, there can seem to be two subjects of the sentence, or like, there's one, and then there's another one, uh, like, right after, and it seems a bit strange, but the reason is because um, the first one, if there's another example, I'll point it out. But for now, I'll just say that the first one is like marking the topic of the sentence, like what the sentence is about. And then the other one is actually the sentence. So let's look at this. So here the sentence, like she says, This is, I'm good at cooking. But the topic of the sentence is who and in this case, huwa is like um, the uh, like the the notion or like um, how would I wait? How would I even explain this? So it's like okay, so it's like in English how we say it's not that I'm busy; it's that da da da. So I'm busy is like the kind of what you're discussing. But you add this, it's not that this, or it's that this. So it's not that I'm busy, uh, it's that I don't want to go out today, or something like that. So this huwa is exactly working like that. So huwa anashadra bit means like, it's that I'm good at cooking, but, except in English it sounds weird, but um, let's rephrase it. Let's say, let's say she said, it's not that I'm bad at cooking. Now that sounds good in English, actually, because in English, it's, I guess we use it in the negative. Um, it's not that I'm bad at cooking, uh, but there's things that I haven't made in a long time. Do you see what I mean now? So, I'm good at cooking, but this hua is actually kind of important. It's not totally throwaway because uh, it emphasizes this like, um, it's like emphasizing th that statement. Like, I'm, I am good at cooking, but you know this. So that's, uh, yeah. It's more of a, I don't want to say advanced, but you know, it's kind of like adding flavor, which, you know, you don't have to do at first, you know, but just keep in mind. Anyway, then in Sanat, طب خليني أشرح لك الخطوات بالتفصيل. So again, طب, okay. خليني, let me, أشرح لك, meaning to explain to you, لك, to you. خليني أشرح لك, let me explain to you. Uh, so, uh, 
is a step. So khutwat is steps. So let me explain to you the steps bitafseel in detail. Fassal is the verb meaning to to detail something, to give detail about something, to explain to well, yeah, let's say to detail something. Uh, bit and then tafsil is the masdar and it means a detail. So tafsilat uh, is details. Or no, sorry, tafasil is details. Um bit tafsil in detail. That's what it means. It's a I guess it's an adverb. Anyway, bit tafsil in detail. So let me explain the steps to you in detail. And then Im Sanat says she's still talking. Ufi Kana al YouTube and there is a channel al YouTube on YouTube. This is how we say on YouTube or on a website. Al YouTube. Um Badillak. So Dal means to point to something or to indicate something. So Badillak Aleha, I will indicate you to it, to the channel. Uh Rahib and then uh Rahib is like uh, amazing, let's say, you know, like great, you know, fantastic, amazing. So the channel is amazing. And then Imyazan says, uh, So again, da'i'a is a minute. So da'i'a wahde, one minute. Ajib, uh, it's like for me to bring. So that's why it's in the subjunctive. A minute, so I can bring. And of course, a minute, it's like give me one minute. One minute, so I can bring. Ajib, uh, a paper, and uala, and a pen. Biddi akhod kaman akam wasfi. So, uh, okay. Ta'i a wahde, ajib wara uallam. Biddi akhod kaman akam wasfi. So, I biddi akhod, I want to take, I want to get. Kaman uh, also. Akam wasfi. Okay, akam means some, very useful word. But keep in mind, which is strange, I know, but keep in mind that with a kam, uh, which can also just be kam, uh, with the alif or not, um, this actually goes with a singular noun. So, wasfa is a recipe. So, in English, this I mean, th literally, it would be like some recipe, like in the singular. But that's actually how it works in Arabic. So, a kam wasfa, uh, some recipe, but it means some recipes. So do use it with the singular. I think this happens a couple of more times in the in this one, in this reading. Okay, and then Imyazan says, "Akam wasfe some recipes." Kullo biseru Imyazan. It's just a joke. Kullo, um, kull, um, you know, all, all of something or every something, depending on the sentence or the phrasing. So kullo all of it, biseru, uh, by I guess bi. Uh, by its price, or uh, let's say at its price. How would it be in English? Everything for its price? Everything for its price? Anyway, that's what she's saying. Uh, Se'ar is price. Se'ru, its price. So everything comes at its price, I guess. Um, I guess it's a joke. So, because she's like getting all this help and stuff. Um, yeah, so that's scene one, which means I will take a Sahara break. Okay, um, now in this scene, the dad is coming home from doing groceries and he says, Marhaba ya jama'a. So, hello ya jama'a is like saying everyone. Ahlain baba. See, notice again, it's Sanad. He's telling his father, Baba, but that's normal. Ahlain baba. Hi, Baba. Hi, Dad. Jib tufah. Tufah is apple. Oh, actually, it's apples. Oh, should I explain this now? It's maybe you already know, actually, this is not too complicated, but most food words are um, like they're so-called collective nouns, which means uh, they they're not exactly plural, but they refer to the whole concept. So to is apples to And then the way that you say one apple or one item of something is by adding tamarbuta at the end. Actually, I mentioned this in my video on tamarbuta. You can check that out. I discussed that. So tufah is like apples, although it's not kind of exactly plural in the same way that other things. Like it's not like beit buyut, but it's just like this kind of concept. Anyway, don't worry about it. But tufah apples, tufaha would be one apple. So jib tufah, did you bring apples? Jab to bring, jibit, did you bring? 
Uh, and then he says, Jibit. So the father says, uh, Jibit, I, I did, I brought. Um, actually, in English, we can confirm things just by saying, I did. You know, did doesn't have its own meaning. So, well, you know, like, did you bring the apples? I did. Not, I brought. Like, that sounds a bit strange in English because the did is used to emphasize and confirm something. But in Arabic, there's no like did, right? There's this, this is very English. So you just repeat the verb. So jibit, I, I, I brought, I did. Um, so I did. And I'm fahim, I don't understand. Enta min emta sirt So I don't understand you, min emta, since when? Yeah, like literally from, from when, since when? Sirt. Uh, Oh yeah, I don't know if I've even formally mentioned this, but min means from, but a lot of preposition, like basically Arabic doesn't really have many, if any, maybe, maybe lama maybe counts, but uh, like prepositions, um, no, let me start over. There's like basically no unique prepositions in Arabic to speak about time. Rather, we just use the same prepositions that we use to speak about anything else. So, for example, min, um, min means from, but we can easily use it with uh, time to say since. In English, we have a lot of unique like um, time prepositions like since or until, but in Arabic we don't actually. We just use normal prepositions. So. Uh, until he comes but lahad it's not really like you can even just use la like the letter lam to mean until and it means to so like basically the, the word by itself means to min means from but in an expression with time it means uh, until and since so it's uh, we use the same preposition and we just apply it to, to time and the meaning changes just automatically. Well, it's not that the meaning changes, it's that in English we have unique words, but in Arabic we don't. That's it. So, By the way, notice again, this is what I mentioned before, sar being used to say to start doing something. So, uh, you started to like, literally to love, uh, have to love, but just to like. Um, apples. And what did I want to say? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just think the pronunciation is kind of interesting. Um, yeah, it kind of gets merged a little bit. I noticed when I was saying it. Anyway, and then Sanat says, So he's just listing like, hey, like here is. So here, here's this and here's this. Um, He's just listing what he's seeing, I guess. Khiar, but it's kind of a random thing. Like, khiar, okay, cucumbers, okay, fine. Chips and ketchup, ketchup chips, okay, never heard of that, but maybe, I mean, why not? Chocolata, chocolate, okay, fine. Shukran, Baba, thanks, Dad. So, yeah, ketchup chips. Anyway, uh, and then Abu Sanat said, Smalla. So, this is cute. I like, so Smalla is like, quite like saying bless your heart you know um i don't even know how to explain how to else to translate it i think that's a good translation so it's like bless your heart so uh, as i said laha means to um to catch up to something or to manage to do something but notice in this case uh, which is the active participle i translate it as like i can't keep up with you like i can't cup catch up to you you know because I'm bringing you food and you're eating all of it and I don't know, like that kind of thing. But it is obviously it's very positive kind of what he's saying. Small love, bless your heart. I can't keep up with uh, you, plural, you kids, right? Alaykum. Sahib is all eating the Don't worry about this word, sahib. I didn't know it, actually. I had not heard that word. And even I checked with my friend and he also was like, I never heard that. Although, I mean, we, I mean, we can infer the meaning because of... Um, First of all, this kind of form is, we see it in some other words. And of course, the root is from sahab, uh, which means to pull. So this particular word, it's not apparently common because um, I didn't know it. And my friend even was like, I don't 
we never heard it, but I guess I understand what it means. So yeah, and uh, it's like pulling a lot. So it's like, I translate it as greedy because I didn't really know how else, but it's like, you know, you're, you're taking a lot. You're really, um, yeah, just let's put it that way. Cause that's literally what that root means, right? To pull. Uh, and then Soyerin, as I mentioned, by the way, like I translate as the youngsters, Ishabab, the, the kids, the young guys, um, uh, they are becoming greedy. Like you're, as I said, Sawyer, actually, wait, um, in the sentence that we saw before, are you starting? Yeah. Are you starting to do something? The Sawyer, that's what it meant in that case. And in this case, Sawyerin is like becoming. So depending on the meaning of saw itself, Sawyer, you know, can have a couple of different, um, uh, translations, let's say, um, so, uh, then in Sanat comes, she says, which as I've said many times, it doesn't mean thank you. That's just what I wrote, but it's something that you say to someone, especially it means may he give you profit or like, uh, benefit, you know, but anyway, it's something that you say, especially when someone has, uh, done work or is working, it's just related to work. It's kind of like, may you get something in exchange for the work that you are putting in or have put in or will put in. So anyway, when the father comes on home, you know, she says that, uh, Abu Sanad, a'atini, give me annek, from you. So give me from you, but she says, because he has all the groceries. So she's saying, let me take some of these things from you. So a'atini annek, give me from you. Uh, let me take something. So that's scene two, which was very short. And now in this scene, uh, in Yazan, is which is just the neighbor she is trying to learn how to make kubbe so she's actually watching a youtube video on her phone and this uh, mara woman <laughs> is just like the host of the or you know whoever is presenting the youtube video so so the youtube video is actually speaking uh actually she has a little bit she says a couple of things differently like i would say kubbe she says kibbe um actually in colombia we say keep um but yeah it, it's uh, one of these words that can be pronounced both ways also uh she says but this word is um more commonly pronounced in palestine as zobit like za it's kind of sound like uh, yeah za so bizobt is what i would say but she actually says bit but it's the same and we will see over here i'll just highlight it really quickly since um uh, there's a verb, uh, zobot, and it, this is actually the same root. Like, this is technically the verbal noun of this verb, although it's spelled differently, which maybe I... But I think she pronounces it as za in this case, but as da in this case. I don't know why, but I would pronounce it as za in both cases. And in fact, I usually write all of these words. I would have written this with zayn, like here. The only reason I didn't is because she actually said it this way, so I was like, okay, fine. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's not too important. So she says, uh, so, and like this bit So, um, so kabab means to literally to roll something into a ball. That's really what it means. Um, so I guess kubbe, which obviously has the same root, ka kubbe is because it's like a little ball, I guess. So kabab uh, to roll into a ball and you have basically the same like kab kib or kab kab it's the same verb like just in a slightly different form it's called reduplication it happens sometimes with uh, verbs with um shadde like let me give you another example so you have kabab and kab kab it's the same exact thing uh and then you have uh for example in another annotated transcript um, we have the verb sab, which means to curse, to say like cuss words. And then uh, Sanad says sab sab instead of sab, which has shadde. Sab, sab sab. Uh, kab bab, kab kab. It's just the same thing. So, uh, but I think the original, like the uh, originally the verb is kab bab. Like that's the standard form. And the reduplicated, these forms like kab kab and sab sab, I, they're just kind of derived from that or like they just uh, are offshoots or whatever spin-offs 
So, uh, and that's how you roll the kubbe into a ball. That's what she's saying. وهيك بتكب الكبة. عشان in order to so that تطلع uh, كل واحدة so, so كل واحدة uh, each one um, yeah واحد one literally right so كل واحدة each one مثل which is the same as زي means like by the way originally it's um, like this تا is ثا so مثل right um, which is where we get words like مثال like example مثلاً uh, for example but again in the dialect we say مثلاً or مثلاً yeah so مثلاً مثلاً um, the more common way of saying ثا in the dialect is ثا let's just simplify it and say that way uh, so مثل it's مثل originally means like and we also have زي um, I would say مثل is more like technically the right word in the sense that it has a comes from it, it has other related words زي I'm, I forget I don't think it's exactly known where it comes from actually but it also means like I actually think زي is a little bit more common but anyway مثل perfect so عشان تتلك الوحدة مثل أختا بالضبط okay بالضبط exactly so أخت of course means sister so literally this says um each one like so that each one comes out uh exactly بالضبط بالضبط uh مثل أخت exactly like its sister like that's the literal translation but it just means so that they all come exactly alike or like yeah exactly alike let's say or you know exactly like each other or like the other you know like its sister literally um so it's just an expression and i just wanted to say lastly tila let's not forget that tila means to means lots of things literally to go up also to leave a place so uh you know actually later she'll say like she goes up the building uh atla i'm going to go so in this case it's clear that she's saying i'm going to go up because she's going in the same building so up um but let's say tlat min al bayt i left the house i didn't go up no because if i if i was going up in the house i wouldn't say min which means from so i'm leaving the house tlat min al bayt i left the house um Tila la he went up, uh, so to go up to leave, but also to come out a certain way or like to turn out a certain way. So ashen uh, so so that they all come out a certain way, they turn out a certain way. Like the kids turned out to be good kids, like elulad tila ulad na. Let's say so, the kids turned out to be good kids. I mean, kind of simple sentence, but yeah. So. Couple of different meanings. You can check the dictionary for examples and so on. So uh, anyway, then Imyazan is kind of uh, being sarcastic. She says, "Middle Ochta Aki, like like it's um, like it's sister, right? Like exactly like each other. Of course, I guess the joke is that like she makes it sound simple, but it's like it just you just say that, but it doesn't mean I can do it. But easier said than done, I guess." Actually, I think that's kind of the kind of the the how we would translate this kind of um, like her feeling in English. We would say like easier said than done. El um, and Again, this is just an expression. It is used, of course. Um, it's uh, but you know, yeah, it's it's an expression. So don't worry about the literal meaning. But Khal uh, is like the creator, um, and then Nata is like a speaker. But these are these uh, like are. This is only the creator, like in the sense of God, and um, this is, well, yeah. I mean, anyway, uh, it's kind of, it's a formal ex way of uh, speaking, but it's like used as an expression, just as an expression, and it's like literally kind of like saying, well, literally means the creator is the speaker, but uh, it's like. I don't even know how to like. I, I I let's just say that what she's saying is easier said than done. Like she's just being sarcastic, and this is kind of a uh, like uh, just a, an expression that is used. The word of God is how me and my friend. Because I asked my friend, I was like, how am I even translate this? He said, eh, that's probably the best way. So, um, 
Yeah, and then she's still kind of complaining. She says, Ya Rabbi. So, Ya Rabbi, if you don't know this, this one is used all the time. It's just like saying, My God. Um, so, Ya Rabbi. Kif titla ma'hum hek. So, my God. How do they come out? How do they turn out? Uh, hek, like that. How do they turn out like that? How do they come out like that? The kubbe. Uh, with, with, literally with them. But in English we say, how how do they come out like that for them? We use for in English, even though also for, if you think about it, doesn't exactly make sense. But in Arabic, we use ma like with. How do they come out like that with them? Um, so yeah, uh, and then and then somehow the YouTube lady starts talking to Imyazan. So it's kind of um, I don't know. It's just a gag, I guess. So the woman says, "Let uh, uli don't." Tell me, let uli, no, let uli, because actually she says let uli, not let uli, which is different actually. Should I even, let uli, don't say, let uli, don't tell me, but masculine actually. Um, let uli has shadda because it's let ul li. So don't say masculine li. But let uli is. There's no shadde on the lamb, you can't even hear it. Lat uli, yes, shadde. Lat uli, no shadde. And no shadde is just the feminine form. Lat ul, and then the ya yeah for feminine. Lat uli, lat ul, plus li. So we added the li for to me. But in this case, the only thing that's been added is the ya yeah for the feminine. So, yeah, sometimes pronunciation can make a little bit of a of difference, actually. So, lat uli. Uh, so don't say how do they come out like that and then she, of course she's surprised that the lady is talking to her so she says yamma yamma is like oh like i don't know just like yeah oh uh, and then she says the woman notice the difference mara woman marra time as an instance marra ala marra uh shall we say it means little by little it's like with each time Actually, shuai yushuai means little by little. Uh, marra ala marra means um, uh, like, yeah, time time by time, like with each time. Uh, idek, or idek, feminine. Idek, your hand. Uh, literally, your hand, ta'khud, will take ashugul. Idek, ta'khud ashugul. Your hand will take to the work. It means like you, your hand will get the hang of it. That's how I would say it in English. Your hand will get the hang of it. Um, your your hands would be what I would say in English, but she says idek. Sorry, idek. Um, and then is a me zobot. Again, remember zobot. Here used as a verb. Zobot means to work, like, but not to work as in like labor, but work as in um, like the computer works or like does that work for you or that kind of thing so in this case if that um or or like to be suitable for someone that kind of thing so is a mess up if it didn't if the kubbe by the way uh, it's in the feminine form because it's referring to the kubbe by the way so is a mess up if they if the kubbe was not suitable or like if it didn't work um yeah if it wasn't fitting استخدمي use استخدم to use استخدمي مثل like هل آلب uh, آلب by the way um, آلب is to to turn or uh, to flip actually to flip something and that's where we get مقلوبة which is a kind of food of course uh, so آلب to flip مقلوب without the تمربوطه is the past participle with the تمربوطه مقلوبة is the kind of food but it's called that because it means flipped because the way that you make this is you have a pot with all rice and whatever and then you flip it and then you take out the pot and then you get this little pile of well it's not a little pile it's a big pile of food um and so it's called matlube from alab um and anyway yeah but uh, anyway so um matlub is the passive participle of alab to flip and alab is the active participle of alab to flip so it's well it literally would be like flipping but the, anyway the meaning is a mold and the way that i explain it is because a mold 
I mean, think about matlube. The pot is the mold, right? So, ah, that's a good way of, uh, that's actually a nice way to think about it. So, alab is to flip, right? Matlube is called, it's, it comes from flipped because you flipped it and you took it out. But what is the thing that is flipping? What is the thing that is alib? What is the mold? The mold is the pot. So, in a way, the matlube is the food, and then el alib, so el matlub, like the, the, what you made, the food. But el alib is the pot. So you have the alib and the matlub all in one, right? So alib is the mold. Um, so use a mold. In English, we would say use a mold like this. But uh, she says, استخدمي مثل هال alib, like like this mold. Well, no, we can also say that. use like this mold. Okay, it's a little bit funky in English, but anyway, it's uh, fine in Arabic. So, مثل first هال alib, like this mold. Um, yeah, anyway. And then Imyazan says, طب قولي uh, هيك من أول. Tell me this. So, okay. قولي, tell me. Oh, no, no, actually, no, not so. Yeah, only would be tell me. Uli is say, just say. Because uli is ul plus li for man. But uli, without shadde, it's the only thing that's been added is the ya, yeah, which is for feminine. So uli, I'm not saying tell me, I'm just saying say that. So uli heik, say that. Min awal, from awal is first. So min awal from. The first, from the start, basically, it's like you can also say min al bidaya from the start, literally bidaya beginning, um, but min awal can it's the same thing from the from the first, from the start, um, from the get go, you know that kind of thing. So uli hek min awal. So say that from the start, um, and then the woman says, "Am baul istakhdumi istakhdumi alib." I'm saying am baul again. The am is like I'm doing it now. I'm saying use the mold. Um, I don't know. It's just kind of funny, the whole video or situation. And then the Imyazan says, "Ki hey So uh, sema is the active participle of sema, which means to hear or to listen. Um, let's say hear. So sema uh, to hear sema means hearing, and. Uh, and then, of course, it's feminine, so we have the ta for feminine because it's she is hearing, and ni for me. So how is hey like this one, or like how is she uh, hearing me? Of course, hey is like you know had like this, but feminine. So uh, yeah, I mean, uh, don't refer to people normally this way, but I guess uh, in this case, yeah. So how is this one hearing me? Um, okay, next scene. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's just Sally by herself. She's doing her homework. So she says, Af uh, il wajib. So, Af is like, Ugh. Uh, um, Wajib is homework. So, Ktir Tawil, very long. Uh, il wajib. The homework is so long. Um, yeah, and, and by the way, so actually, yes, so Ktir means very. But it is used exactly also like so in English. Like, this is so boring. Had uh, mumil. Like, this is, it. literally, this is really boring, but it's like the way that we use in English so, it's just the same in Arabic, the way that they use ktir. Um, so, so that's why I translate as ktir to il wajib, or il wajib. The homework is so long, like, you could also translate it as it's very long, but this feels more natural in English. I really, it's just a matter of how English says things. So, uh, yeah. And then she calls Rana. She calls her friend. Uh, Hi, Rana. But Saddi, do you believe? So, of course, in English we say, can you believe? But, you know, do you, can, you, can you believe? But Saddi, do you believe, literally? But Saddi, enno, that, la halla. Actually, here's the la meaning until, as I mentioned before, la halla until now. We can also translate it as still in this case. It's kind of synonymous. Um, actually, yeah, you can say inno lissa ma khallasat. That uh, can you believe that I still didn't finish? Or inno la halla 
ما خلصت it's the same thing like إنه إن لهل um, there's a slightly different connotation because لسه is like still but لهل is like like until now like literally until now so it's like uh, so much time has passed and even now until this moment I have still not finished it's a little bit more emphatic I would say um, yeah so can you believe I still ما خلصت I still have not finished التلخيص don't worry about this word uh, they will say it a few more times but لخص uh, is to summarize something تلخيص is a summary so it's a summary of a book um, that she has to do so can you <laughs> mouthful um, can you yeah it doesn't help that actually it's the same letters as خلص which means to finish لخص to summarize so as I said don't oh, don't worry about this word really it's not that necessary but yeah can you believe that until now I still haven't finished the summary uh, and then she asked Anti uh, shu you ah this is an example of the topic marking thing uh, what which I like I was saying that um, sometimes there there can be a, a subject in the beginning which doesn't seem to really relate to the rest of the sentence very clearly so in this case if I translated this literally it would be you what happened to you but it's because the first word is actually just marking the topic like you're just saying as for you you know what happened to you yeah it's uh it's in this case it makes sense but it's it's very common in in arabic even if you try to translate into english it doesn't exactly work and by the way there's some situations where this topic marking thing is actually like mandatory in a way for the proper meaning to be conveyed but i'm not going to mention this now or like i'm not going to discuss it now um just for the sake of this anti shusarmat uh, you, what happened with you? What happened to you? Mabadeti, you didn't start. Bada, to begin, to start doing something. Mabadeti, you didn't start. Feminine, of course. Kif How uh, are you going to uh, to to manage or to catch up? Uh, let's say to manage. How, how will you manage to do it? Um, and then she says, Mashireti riwaya. You didn't, so, shara, to buy. Mashereti, you didn't buy Irriwaya, the novel. You didn't buy the novel. Um, someone has, by the way, I've been asked a couple of times about this. Do you know that uh, Shara is for, so the verb to buy in Arabic, in the dialect, in Palestinian Arabic, we use two different forms, like literally two different verb forms um, for this verb. But one is for the, one is for the past tense and one is for the present tense. So, shara for the past tense. But in the, so who is shara in the past tense? This is actually form one with a broken ending. But in the present tense, we actually use form eight for some reason. We add this ta. So, bishtri. Uh, so, who is bishtri with ta? Who is bishtri? Who is in the present? Who is shara in the past tense? So, uh, you can look at the Wiktionary entry where you can just kind of visualize it and, and take a look at it. But do keep that in mind because I've gotten questions about this, but it's uh, it's not that I, or like, it's um, it's not strange at all. Like this is exactly very normal. This is exactly what happens. So it just happens with this verb. So, you didn't buy the novel. Not So to summarize it. So. Uh, as you may or may not know, sar can be used to say uh, someone has been doing something for a particular period of time. It's actually, there's a lot of elements involved in making this phrasing, which you can see in my video on sar. But yeah, um, sar, uh, ila, so the, the, the elements are sar, ila, to, the, and then whoever it is. So sar, ila, hiya, so sar, ilha, uh, it has been to her. Usbur, a week. Those are the four elements. Sar plus lam plus the suffix whoever is you're talking about, and then a period of time. There must be a period of time, otherwise it actually doesn't work. There's another way of saying someone has been doing something without, like, if you don't want to specify a period of time, 
then there's another way of saying this actually all together which we will see actually in the same transcript although it's, it will be in part two because it's actually at the end but yeah so for this expression you do need all four elements sar ila pronoun uh, and then a period of time so sar al husbur it has been well she has been doing x y and z for a week what has she been doing oh and also il miss um it miss like the miss the teacher um Talbe, meaning from talo, of course, meaning to request or to ask for something. Um, so, and it's the active participle. So she has been requesting in lochisha that we summarize it, meaning the novel, of course. So literally, or not literally, but she, uh, let me highlight. Uh, so she, el miss, has been um, asking us to summarize it for a week. That's how it all breaks down. Yeah, let's leave it at that. And then, mahu shu, kif yani, mahu. This is a very good word, very, very good word that I'm not really gonna get into now, but let's just say, uh, remember that ma, ma uh, has a lot of different meanings and I actually mentioned mahu and I explained all of this in my video on mass, which I think is actually quite a good video. So check that out. Basically, ma can be used to emphasize something. Basically, I mean, there, you know, especially if, if it's something that's contrary to expectation or like there's other things that I could add, but let's just say to emphasize something. Uh, mm, yeah. And then uh, it, this who is like just, okay, mahu mashur, but he's, like he's busy. It's it, ma is emphasizing who mashur, but it's so common to use this who, uh, like, as the start of a sentence that it kind of got fused to ma into its own, like, single word basically. So you have ma to emphasize, but then you also have mahu, and it's like the same thing exactly. Mahu shu, like, so she's saying mahu shu because clearly Rana is saying mahu. Mahu ana da, 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 like she's saying like but I but I but I it doesn't mean but but it's like you know emphasizing like so Sally's like mahu shu like she's reacting to clearly Rana saying mahu and so she's like but but what like you know so it's uh, this is a great example of like words that don't have exact meanings but they they really add flavor and they really add natural like this is what natural speech speech sounds like mahu ma for emphasis that kind of thing. Anyway, kif yani, like how, but how, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, this will be the last scene for today. Um, yeah, okay, so let's see where we're doing with the time. Oh my God. Okay, no, no, I lied. Let's finish here because it's already been an hour. Uh, and then we will do the rest uh, next time. But yeah, thank you for watching. Um, and look at this cute button that I added. So you can scroll to the top. So, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. That was part one of the annotated transcript, Mean Al Harami, which is available now on my new flashy website. Uh, and I will explain everything about that. So basically, I will just uh, leave it at that and I will see you next time.